So at this point, I've got the drawing that looks like this. It looks nice in this style of flat cell shading. I want to then do advanced colorization. So this was a little bit of a practice from last time, which may further help you do this assignment that's due today. You don't have to do the advanced colorization that we're about to talk about to your homework that's due today. You should at least do the flat colorization. Um, before we actually do it, I'm going to take a quick look at those handouts that I gave you. So, uh, let's see, Manga Adjust Lines, that's the handout that tells you about... Uh, would you like to run the text? No. Uh, this is the one that tells you how to uh, draw the lines, overlap the lines, then you can then delete the lines that are overlapping to get smooth lines. So we saw that. We saw also turn it into smooth lines. The interface is a little bit different because it's an older book, but this is the technique that we've been doing. The other handout is uh, Manga Highlights and Shadows. This is what we have did right now and last time also in dividing up the, the, the flat colors. Here they did it very complex with a lot of lines and curves. These, these seem to be just straight lines that were bent painstakingly. So all of these then give you all of these strands of hair and look it up there. And again, light source. Top or left and then right. This would be a highlight, highlight shadows, highlight shadow left and right. Same thing here, the face has already been done. Here's the shadows because of where the hair is at. Following that line, the face, the, the curve of the face. Here's the, uh, the neck where you've got the highlights of the neck muscles. And then the ears. And that goes on for a couple of pages to give you that idea. Look at the, the, the white clothing here. Still, you've got a gray or, or you've got your mid-tone, you've got your highlight, you've got your dark tone. So it's not that it's pure white clothing. It has a middle tone, the basic color, and then all of this is highlighted, <coughs> dark. These lines here, there's really only the lines, the, this one, two, three lines. But this depth happens because then there's dark and light and highlight, middle and dark and highlight. And page two just goes on again. Divide up your, your shapes, fill in a brighter color, darker color, and then you're getting that kind of effect, which is what we're doing. And then comes the gradient part. This one's... Uh, using gradations to draw eyes with feeling or any other uh, complex shape. So basically, it still comes down to drawing a shape to separate it from the surrounding colors and then filling in a gradient, radial gradients, linear gradients, as I'll show you how in a moment. That looks really weird right there on the eye, but then we can further manipulate those gradients, something like that. And it goes on. This one's uh, five pages long, actually. We will see here also. We want to do these highlights that blend with transparency. Again, separating shapes to fill in gradients. This time it'll be transparent gradients. We'll manipulate the gradients in ways to get that effect. The classic bright highlights, pure white, but fading into the rest of the, the color. And it goes on to more examples, the tools, brightening it up, dividing up the face with just any color, then filling it in. We'll see the gradient in a moment to give like, you know, like skin tone, rosy cheeks, blends, all of that. We're going to do that right now. We're going to duplicate our current layer. I, I'm gonna, I want to keep this flat version just in case, and then I want to duplicate it. So layer one, I'm going to call that flat color. Lock it. Right click to turn into a guide. And then right click the layer again and select duplicate layer. On the duplicated layer, I'll call that gradient color. Unlock it and unguide it. And I'll also hide the flat color. So I have a version where it's all flat, basic colors that I want to keep. If I ever want to come back to it, it's a guide so it doesn't print. And 
in and I've locked it so that I don't accidentally draw on it. And then I've got a brand new copy of it with a new name, unlocked, ready to, ready to work on. Okay, so the way this will work is, <coughs> let's say maybe I want to start with the hair. I want those gradients to blend rather than being flat. Uh, these highlights, that is. I want these highlights to blend from this color to that color. Well, that's a gradient. It's blending <coughs> one color to another color. If we get the paint bucket, our color panel is showing we're about to add a solid color. If you look on that spot, instead of solid, we have linear gradient, radial gradient, and also bitmap fill. So we can fill in a, text, a texture. The linear gradient shows it's going to go, in my case, from black to white. From black to white. A radial gradient is going to radiate like a sunburst. Wherever I drop it in, from the center, it'll be black to white. That's the center outward, black to white. Well, I don't want black and white. Here I want the colors that I've chosen up there. So if the left, let's put it on radial gradient to start off. And the left color right here, if you double click that little box, you get then a color picker. Well, I want it to start from the highlight. So I double clicked, I'm on radial. I double click the starting point where it's going to radiate from the center that color. The outer color is going to be the mid-tone color. I'm going to select there, and then on the right box, double-click that one, and select the final color. This to that. And if I drop the color there, it's going to start to blend. Click the next one, the next one, the next one. Well, it didn't quite do it how I envisioned it, and that's okay because it doesn't quite know what you're envisioning. To further refine this, we then have to go to the gradient transform tool. It's hidden inside of the quick, the free transform tool. So after I've set my color to all of these separate shapes, Gradient Transform tool will let me click on, on, on the object Just one moment. Oh, my gradient is huge. It's so big. That's kind of odd. Huh, okay. Well, let's see what you what you guys get. Um, so, well, We should be able to use either one of them, but for some reason it made it really big. So what's happening here is I dropped in my color, and then with that uh, gradient transform, I get these edges where I can start to define the boundaries of my radial gradient. But it seemed that my radial gradient was huge. I have to zoom out to find the edges of it. Is there a way to reset that? Let me see. Let's give this a let's give this a try. Maybe it worked for you, but 
uh, what I'm trying to do is with that uh, gradient transform I click on that highlight and then what happens is that I can move around where is that gradient and it's only moving around in the part where I added the gradient it should only move around in that part you can then use these handles to further manipulate the gradient, rotating it, resizing it, <coughs> distorting it, and from the center point, moving it around. So what that did was, at this point, <coughs> is the absolute center of the radial gradient, and then it fades out to these other colors. So these separate shapes, even the part here where it looks like it's blending completely into the, the other red, it's still a different color. Even if I blend it exactly like it's going right here, you can see it's subtly different, so it's a different shape. Here, you can't see it. That looks like it blended exactly to that. It's still, this shape is still a shape because the color inside of it is a gradient. It just happens to be a gradient that blends exactly into the background flat color. Mathematically, Animate still sees it as a completely separate shape. So I could go in and if I wanted to <coughs> still manipulate it with the gradient transform tool, I could drop in a brand new gradient if I wanted, <coughs> just to make it obvious and weird. I'm going to put a, you know, different colors. Hmm. It's so weird. It's making my transform huge. So what I'll do is, uh, just to further practice this, uh, I'm going to get back to Paint Bucket. I'm going to fill in just a uh, basic solid color. basic solid color again there's still it's still a separate shape I could do the linear gradient linear gradient goes from one color to another and in this case if I click and drag in the direction that I want the color to blend this is another way to do it Maybe a linear gradient might work a little better. I clicked and dragged, I found the angle. It's blending here from the highlight, the brightest part, to from dark, from the bright to the center color here, and it fades in. This is still a separate shape. I'll do the same thing here. Click somewhere and drag it down and see about actually touching it. So I'll click and drag somewhere here, maybe. This can be also further edited with that gradient transform tool. started to make these gradients that blend. Keyboard shortcut F for the gradient free transform tool. And if I click these different gradients, I get these control points where I can change the, 
the blur, how much it happens, the angle of it, the position of it. So the linear gradient might work a little better. <coughs> you choose your starting and ending colors, you click and drag to get it started, and then you fine tune it with the free transform tool. So now here I'm getting this effect where it's more depth, more blends. For the shadows, I would do something similar. Here I'm blending from the highlighted color to the mid-tone. This is blending, should blend from a dark tone to the mid-tone. Same thing here. I'm going to double click this uh, starting color and pick the dark tone, keep the mid-tone, and then click and drag with my linear gradient to blend between those, those colors. Just have to find the right angle. <coughs> and if you don't get it right on the first try, you can go to the with the f uh, gradient free transform tool. So you see I'm if I'm dragging upward it goes that way, if I'm dragging downward it's going the wrong way. So I just have to play with it a little bit, which is the right angle, the right direction. So for each of these separate like islands of color, you can go in and manipulate them, and then with free transform, maybe fine tune it. That might be a better way than trying to drag it the first time. So with the linear gradient and the free transform gradient, I have this shape. I have a rotation, starting point, and how far out. It's behind there. It's a little arrow. Each of these can be independent. <coughs> obviously is, is going to take more work, but it could be giving you something like this. These flat colors now have some blends. The more I manipulate that, the more I could get that effect. For the skin, I would do something similar. I would get the paint bucket, linear gradient, set my starting and ending colors. Starting with the dark, going to mid-tone, and then click and drag. Instead of just clicking to drop a color, now I'm <coughs> clicking and dragging to, to put the color direction.
So because I've got, in this case, from a darker color to a lighter color, I found that what worked for me was to start somewhere in the color, click and hold, and drag out to the middle color. Because that's what that's doing, from a darker to the middle color. It looks like here to get this. You click and drag out a little bit, and start to blend. I can fine tune those blends always with the free transform. But if I kind of get it close the first time, well, that's done. I don't, I don't need to really go back to it. Maybe that one I need to play with a little bit. It's pretty OK, and that one's good there. Because it's a separate shape here and here. I might have to go back and fix that one. <coughs> So I'm going from the dark inside out to the to the outside, and I just have to figure out the angle. With the flat colorization, we saw the difference between the mid-tone and the dark tone and the light tone didn't have to be that much. With a gradient, however, you may have to go more extreme, a darker version of the dark color to a lighter version of the light color. So here, for example, on the projector, <coughs> it's, it's kind of hard to see the difference. So I should probably go with the darker purple to the mid-tone just to make sure that it's visible. Here, it's obvious that there's the mid-tone and the highlight. But when I actually do the blend with the gradient, I might have to go colors a little bit more extreme in the, in the spectrum. So you're always able to go back to anything that you've drawn, select it, and continue to manipulate it in your panels. If it's not quite behaving, try to turn on or off this lock color in the corner. Lock color is supposed to be that if you start to fill in a gradient or a color here, it will continue over there. If you've got it locked, the color will jump. It will continue from when you started here to there. You may want that. It may be getting in your way. So if the colorization is not happening how you think, try turning that off. <coughs> You may then do how do what you expected. That's the lock fill.
Don't forget that you can zoom in. Sometimes these details can be worked out better once you've gotten closer. tool or the pencil, if I make a line right there, now I've got an area to put a gradient going in one direction and a, and a shape to make a gradient in a different direction. I can take um, some time to work on. The last thing I want to do and then we'll wrap up is I would like a really cool highlight uh, on the eye here, for example. Uh, this is uh, too, too sharp on the edge. I want a nice big gradient that really blurs and blends. That's going to be now blending of a color to transparency. There's several ways to do this. We'll do it this way. In a new layer, I'm going to lock the gradient color layer and then make a new layer called um, White Highlights. So I have found it's a little easier to do this on a completely separate layer because if I try to do it on the current layer, I'm going to run into many pieces of a, um, of a color. And the way this works, again, it's really weird and interesting because Animate sees shapes. And inside of a shape could be a flat color or a gradient. And now the gradient could go to transparency. So in a new layer, make sure you've locked the other one. I'm going to get the, um, the oval tool. And I'll set a, a stroke of red and a fill for the moment of, a, of none. I want an oval with some red outline or purple or whatever, and then no fill for the moment. And um, if I draw some kind of circle, I'm not going to draw it exactly as what the highlight currently is there. Some circle around the eye. This is on a separate layer, so this is not going to interact or cut any other shapes there. Then I'll get the paint bucket, put it on uh, radial gradient. We'll have from the left, it'll start on white. To the right, it'll go to white. 
but the difference is I'm going to have it go to alpha or transparency of zero. So white fully visible to white invisible. Radial gradient paint bucket, white to invisible white. You can change that from 100 to zero. What that will do is it'll make a little starburst, a radial gradient going from solid white to transparent. This can be manipulated to where it falls off. And now I've got a shape here which is closed, which is on its own layer, so it won't interfere with the rest. If I click there, in the center, I'm getting from the white out to the transparent. I don't need that outline anymore. If I go back to the selection tool, double click the outline and delete it, there is a highlight right here, which is one selectable color. I can click that highlight and it'll select it into all one weird um, flat color. And I can move it around and if I you know if I put it over here and then click elsewhere, it still keeps it as a color that blends from white fully visible to white invisible. This whole thing is one object, even though it looks like it's multiple colors. That was the point of drawing the, the oval, a closed shape. I had simply <coughs> an outline for a closed shape with the bucket. I then devised a color that blended from white to transparent white. That's bound inside of that shape. I don't need that shape anymore. So I can delete that edge there. And then after that, I can go back to the uh, free transform gradient tool and change that as well. That has these bounding boxes. If I make it go out further, I get more of an edge, not so good. <coughs> I go in a little closer, change these angles, rotate it. So what I get are these, this gradient existing on its own layer that has an edge that doesn't uh, actually spill out to anything else because it's on its own layer, because it's bound by this box, which is now invisible. And that object, it's technically there, but it does the, the blur. And what I can do is hold Alt and drag a copy. Here I've got I've got that um, transparency. I've got something that's transparent that is actually an object, and I can still select and move it around and do different things with it. So I drag the copy over here, put a copy over there. Just put some highlights there. So you can drop in that highlight, put it in different areas. On some places it looks better than others, but I can further manipulate with the gradient transform, with the with every other tool I have. <coughs> so this technique that we're doing here is in that is in that other handout, the one about the colorization. So together we 
use the gradient tools. Linear gradients often work really well. We saw here a radial gradient that we looked at a brand new tool. We looked here at the f gradient free transform. Once we've put in a color blend, we then can still manipulate with that tool, move the objects around, put them in different layers. Now this is our advanced colorization. This is another, another way to do it. Uh, if I take it back how I had it before, there's my flat color, which looks nice. It has a certain style. And now what we've just done together is this, these gradients, these blurs, transparency, all of this in the color panel. We were dealing with flat colors. Now we've got radial gradients, linear gradients. So this, um, this is where we'll wrap the main lecture at this point. Uh, what I would like to do is, if you haven't uh, printed the homework that's due today, I'll turn the printer back on in a moment, and you have until 1 to complete the assignment from last week. What I would also like you to do is this one that you worked on here with us together, um, print it out with your name, and that's how I'll take attendance. So do your colorization, print it out, put your name on it, turn it in, and then I'll mark, I'll mark that you're here. So I'll upload these videos. You'll have time to work. You can ask me or Angie or if any of the other our lab gurus show up, you can ask us questions.